And then he said, don't wish it was easier, wish you were better. Don't wish for less problems, wish for more skills. Because I can't catch a break, guys? Yeah. Get them the fuck away from me. I can't, I can't be around those guys. People think, oh well, cleaning your room, that's just a cliche. It's like, yeah, really, eh? Just go ahead and try it. If people had any idea how powerful sleep is for healing from anything, and the fact that it's free. My mind is absolutely bulletproof, solid as a rock. Podcast. And we're live. What's crackalacking? How are you, Niall? I am fantastic. How are you, Brandon? Ah, oh, sure, fantastic. You know yourself. Oh yeah, that's it. Oh right, Brandon. That's the end of the podcast. <laughs> Moving on. <laughs> All right, guys. So we're here today to talk about how lockdown or. COVID-19 slash coronavirus has affected our lives personally, professionally, physically, socially, and emotionally. Do you know what the most annoying, frustrating thing about this whole bloody thing for me? What? I've heard nothing else come out of media except for corona, 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 yep. corona. Honestly, it is so bloody draining. And... That is so ironic because that is what our podcast is about as well. And, oh, well, yeah, I agree with that. Up until like the last couple of days when this whole George Floyd uh, thing has come into mind. True. Jeez, that was bloody crazy. I only actually watched the, the full video there the day before yesterday and it was chilling. I didn't watch it. Chloe, Chloe showed me a picture. No, I actually I seen a picture, and Chloe was just telling me in detail about last night, and I literally had to ask her to stop like that. It's just, it's so it grim. Like you can, you can see him die. Jesus. Like you can even, you can tell, you can tell he's dead because he was, he was like complaining that he was sore, complaining, 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 and then like, do you know what? Like your neck's gonna be tense because obviously someone's leaning on you, and then there came a point where it just kind of went lax. And then it was lax for like four minutes or three or four minutes. Oh my and then the video ended. You don't even know if he got off him. When they were picking him up to put him in the ambulance, they dragged him like he was a fucking fish. What? Yeah. That was chilling. Well, that's a cheery note to start off the podcast. America, America is fucked, basically. Apparently, yeah. Apparently, it's rights and everything you were saying. Yeah. In loads of cities. So funny because I am literally so out of the loop when it comes to news. Like I just don't concern myself with all that kind of stuff. I'm not sure if that's good or bad, but I just I just don't have time for that negativeness in my life. It's just so draining just to think about. Obviously, look, you want to support anybody going through a rough time, and I just don't. I don't know. I just don't feel like. I just don't feel like I like I said. It's like that's like the emotional energy that literally takes to think about and actually try and unpack and you know, think about it, it's just, it really is chilling. It's crazy, like, yeah, I, I, I'd say it's probably uh, positives to, to not looking at the media. Then there's the yeah. negatives as well. I'm saying, like, oh. obviously, look, I had the, you no know, choice to kind of deal with the whole corona situation because it, it directly affects you, but just like, even, but even your man, it's like, it's not like, I, it's not like I don't want to, I don't want to pay attention to it, it's just, I wouldn't, I wouldn't engulf myself in it because like, if I, like, I heard about the story, that's bloody tragically awful. You know, if there's anything I can do to help, you know, I'll, I'll do it. But then I, I kind of feel like I suppose I have to move on because that's like, like I said, you could literally, you could literally spend the next month wrapped up in that because that's, you know, and the rest, because it's just so, it's just so intense. Yeah, exactly. All right. Let's move on. Get on to something even uh, a little less, you know, depressing. So coronavirus, COVID nineteen, lockdown, quarantine, blah blah blah, all these buzzwords. So what did you? What have you? Have you gotten on since what? Well, March, must be March twentieth or something like that. Um, it was a bit of a double edged sword for me. It's great because I got to spend a little more time with Mason and Chloe, and obviously you know Mason's only five months old. So, um, um what what's this going on? Like four months. Well, it was maybe, it was like half of March and then April and May and it's, what, it's the second half day of May, so it's two and a half months, ten weeks or so. 
Seems longer. It seems really longer. It seems like a like a lifetime. It's great. I remember when I was born in the COVID uh, crisis. That's what it seems like. Mm. Seems like it seems like. Uh, a- I think the 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 thing that makes it just feel long is because there's that you know bit unknown aspect where you don't know when you can start. It's like you don't know when you can start living your life normally again. Yeah, well, I think I think the what would you say the end is in the horizon, isn't it? Really, I don't know because you know they're predicting a second wave in the winter, so it's hard to tell. I know, but I don't think I really don't think, and maybe I'm wrong. Maybe I'm wrong, but I don't think this is going to happen again. Like I said, it's like I think a better approach would be instead of shutting everything down, you need you need to isolate the vulnerable mm. that's it like, like we can't do this again and like unless it's like genuine unless it's like polio or something like this seems to be affecting the vulnerable you know what I mean like the people who are run down already have a disease already have a condition and if that's not the case if that if you don't fall into that bracket well then your part is zero 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 one percent of the healthy population who will get it and it's like, and that's the rule of the dice you have to take. You know, so every time I get in my car, I have to roll the dice. You know what I mean? Yeah. Every time you get an airplane, you have to roll the dice. We can't keep shutting down the economy, shutting down the schools, just because, and 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 and, and shutting down people's social social situations, um, just because, you know, of, of of something something like that. I think that when this first came about, I don't think we. I thought I think we thought it was going to be worse. Yeah, I get that. You know, like, there like there's, been, you know, there has been a lot of deaths. I'm not like, sure exactly sure the, the exact number, but it's in the hundreds of thousands anyway. Yeah, yeah, no, look, yeah, I, I completely understand, and and obviously it's it's it, it's a it's a very strange one as well because, like I said, there's that whole flatten the curve thing, which was really which was really interesting and really really like so crazy and admirable to like the scientific community that they can literally say, oh no, look, like, we actually understand how this works. Like we can flatten the curve, and like this will not impact the way that it has to but like it will not be this drastic thing and I think Ireland hit the nail on the head there like we really did yeah. do very very well but like decreased numbers and all that kind of stuff but I feel like maybe you know we could roll out of it a little bit quicker maybe I'm wrong yeah it's hard to tell like even yesterday when I was walking the dog like around town like it was still dead like um, I was out like half nine last yeah, night yeah I'm just uh, for anybody listen I'm 24 I don't know anything so you know this is not science this is my opinion. Like, um, yeah, I think you're right when when you say that we thought it was going to be a lot worse. But uh, Ireland, Ireland has done a really good job. Like, I, I was, I obviously, I keep up with Ireland's cases every day, and I, I, I go on to you know the worldwide cases every day. I have it open on my on my on my phone. And Ireland at one point was twentieth in the world in cases, and I think maybe in the last three weeks or so, maybe three or four weeks, we dropped down to thirty fourth. So, Ross. like, our cases haven't gone, like, over 20. I think they've gone, like, they've gone, they, it took maybe a month to go from, like, a couple thousand to, like, 20,000. And then it's been, like, maybe, it's been, like, a thousand and maybe a thousand five hundred in the last three weeks. And that's cases, that's not deaths, is it? Like, no, like, just pure cases. I know, obviously, it's it's pure cases that were tested. So, you know, obviously, the number's probably... A little bit higher um, than we would have we would have thought, but uh, we we or we have you know the the numbers to prove. But like, there's been like a three hundred percent, like a 500 percent decrease in the amount of cases that we have. You know, I heard I heard this, and I'm not sure if it's true or not. I have absolutely no idea. And again, so you know, listen to this podcast as entertainment, not as information. Um, Just one second, I'm gonna close my window. There's some work going on outside. Yeah, no worries. Um, just said, we're listening. Like I, I heard that apparently, anyway, in America, for talk's sake, they were attributing deaths to COVID that weren't actually just, you know, if somebody had COVID, they contributed the death, even if it was not a COVID death, you know, like a heart attack or something like that, um, to COVID, essentially because people in, and maybe I'm butchering this, but people in like America for talk's sake, like doctors were getting like laid off and all that kind of stuff because obviously when the, sh- the hospital shut down, mm-hmm. um, when the hospital shut down, all major operations 
um, also were shut down. So that means that specialists and all that kind of stuff, people employed in other sectors who weren't just dealing with COVID patients, they actually uh, uh, got less work. So even though the hospitals in some areas were, were, were over, overflowing, um, in some areas um, they were actually losing work. And what the doctors were doing in, in some situations, you know, they were, they were having to make the choice to skew the numbers a little bit to essentially provide funding to the hospital so that they can keep doctors in work. Okay. Really? Which is like, like I said, which is, which is crazy because you kind of have, uh, what would you say? What would you say? What's the word? You have a bit of a conundrum, you know? So it's like, do I like skew the numbers or do I, you know, put more people out of work and, you know, put other people who have families to feed and all that kind of stuff under financial stress? Or do I just, you know, jump in the bandwagon and kind of may skew the numbers a little bit kind of for the greater good you know it's like all you're really doing is um causing a little bit more caution and you know maybe in a situation like this caution is not the worst thing but even saying that it's, it's maybe not the truth and it, it blows things and maybe a little bit out of proportion and i heard this from elon musk he didn't tell me directly but i heard him talking about it um, and he said this is not conjecture this is fact this has been proven and he builds rocket ships so i believe him I know for a fact that in the UK they cancelled all non-major, major, you know, surgeries. Like they cancelled all elective surgeries, sports surgeries, all basically they cancelled all surgeries that if you can live without them, you're not you're not getting them for the foreseeable future. And obviously, you know, doctors that specialise in that sort of surgery would obviously have been out of the job. Yeah, so yeah, it's probably, it's probably very true. Good so, what have you? What, have you uh, gotten? Have you come to terms, or have you dealt with the the difference in our in our work schedule? Obviously, we are we've been working from home for nearly ten weeks now. Um, yeah, I mean, I, I kind of like I kind of like it in some aspects, and obviously, I don't like it in other aspects. Like, I miss the buzz and I miss the energy of the classes. Um, yeah. But I also do like a little bit of peace and um, and headspace that you get from kind of working online, which is really cool. And um, I re I really really am inspired by the amount of people who made progress when they hadn't got a gym. Yeah. Like these people were just committed to health and fitness. Like the fight and fit community is just one of literally one of the best community people I've ever seen in my life. Stephen put up a post there the other day, just kind of about like the support, you know, like the like support. And it's what's, what I thought was really cool was the flip was that like, I know on our team, we feel like um, everyone's supporting us. And then yeah. on the client's end of things, they feel like we're supporting them. So it really is win-win, yeah. which is just awesome. Um, but yeah, no, I really, I, really, I really do like the new working schedule. I get to work it done in the morning. I get an awful lot of off work to do. Um, I can keep everybody accountable. Obviously, you guys' schedules freed up, so we kind of uh, split everybody up um, to have their own clients and stuff like that, so everybody actually got more attention, not less, um, which is really cool. Um, my only, my only um, issue with the system as it is at the minute is maybe just that more people don't have weights. If more people, I honestly think if everybody had like relatively heavy weights, like weights that they felt heavy, um, I honestly think like this, like you wouldn't need a bloody gym. True. Yeah. Well, it's been proven with, with a lot of the clients that, you know, body weight works from a, you know, a fat loss point of view for sure. I don't know. I don't know if it, but I don't know maybe the exact science and if it works for a, a muscle building. I don't Point think so. you, but, um, like obviously, yeah. it, dep it depends on, on your level of, of training. If you're a beginner, it's going to be brilliant. You'll you'll get loads of gains from from oh, push ups and burpees and all that kind of stuff. But if you're if you're intermediate and you know you 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 need weights, you just need you need yeah. weights to build muscle. And as well as that, for the elderly and older clients, um, and obviously even for us, you know, it's like mo uh, weight training has been scientifically proven to improve a. Uh, bone density which is super important yeah exactly yeah definitely if you're a beginner if you're a beginner nearly anything you do is going to be you know extremely beneficial for us you know the first six eight weeks or so but yeah progressive overload you know with your body obviously you can you know increase the time under tension more reps you know add you know some sort of like I've seen a lot of people, I've seen a lot of people on the internet like, putting like school bags on their back and doing push-ups and that sort of thing. Like, yeah, of course that's going to help a little bit, but yeah, I do agree that you need, eventually you do need, you do need some sort of, some sort of heavier progressive overload to get exactly. the muscle. To, to, keep, to keep going. Like, like I said, if you were at a stage in your training where you were at, let's say 
X weight of 100 kilo total volume over session, whatever it is, you know, and then you've had to now regress. You actually will lose gains, you know, unfortunately. Yeah. Um, if you were at a stage where maybe now actually because of all the extra body weight, you've actually gone up volume, well, then you actually might build a little bit of muscle, which is great. So it's great for some, not great for others, but it's just, again, it's not ideal. This, isn't, this was not our decision to move online. We were forced back into a corner and kind of had no other choice. This is not ideal for us. And this is not kind of the, you know, this is the philosophy that we designed. If you gave us, you know, a vacuum and said, okay, what program would you design? Obviously, we'd stick to the fight and fit, hit and lift philosophy. Um, we find that that works best for the, the busy individual who wants to build muscle, get fit and lose fat. Um, but, like I said, you've got to make the best of a bad situation. You've got to roll with punches. And like I said, it's not as if people aren't making progress. It's not as if people aren't losing fat. Losing fat, for the most part, is... Um, is dying anyway. Yeah, and I, I've noticed that a lot of people. Maybe it's not. Maybe you know the body weight where uh, the body weight program isn't the best for muscle building. But I've definitely noticed uh, a lot of people performing better. Not not yeah, not that yeah. they're building muscle, but they're performing better. Yeah, you know, like they're I mean, more they're more fit. Their muscles are more uh, you know efficient, explosive. You know that sort of thing. Yeah, well, you're you're only training muscular endurance. You're talking high reps. So like you said, yeah, for strength training, it's not ideal. But for muscular endurance, you can get a hell of a workout. Um, um, and mobility, you know, yeah. muscular endurance and mobility, and then your cardiovascular training as well. I mean, those three, but you know, for toxic, for body body recomp, which is kind of you know that aesthetic look, and you know, that's sixty percent of the reason that people do it. Um, you know, it's okay, weight training is going to be better, but mobility, strength, endurance, and cardio, you have to make the best of the situation. And like I said, it's like there is still. Tons and tons and tons of benefits to be had from just moving your body. It's like sitting on the couch is not an option. <laughs> of course not. I have I have noticed uh, well, another positive of the whole you know um, COVID nineteen situation is, uh, as as regards to fitness is people have I think that I I was listening to the news something like there was a, between like a twenty five and forty percent increase in um, they did a survey and there was a twenty five percent increase in people walking like people getting out and moving in the month of March and April than it was in, in February. Which, uh, I, I was, it is, it is great. It is great. Obviously maybe those people would have been, you know, on a treadmill or something like that, but I still, I still think it's an, it's a cool stat. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's great to see people getting more active. You know, I, I definitely noticed that. And it, it was just that kind of mindset. You know, if someone says your mom, like if you're sitting downstairs, on the PlayStation, you punch your sister, and then she's like, "All right, go to your room and don't go outside all day." It's like the first thing you want to do is go outside. Yeah. Well, I yeah, I was always, you know, when I was younger and I got grounded, mine was go to my room because I love being outside. But it's it can go the other way. Like when my brother, he hated going outside. He just loved playing the PlayStation all day. And when he was in, when he got grounded, he had to go outside. <laughs> That's hilarious. He was, made, he was made go. He was made sit outside. And uh, he like he wouldn't even he'd be in such a huff that he he wouldn't even play any of the games with the kids. He'd just sit on the bench. <laughs> so, uh, what about you, Niall? What's the kind of biggest changes that kind of you had to overcome since the whole isolation crack? Well, to be honest, I am I am pretty I'm enjoying uh, working from home. Like I do I do like it. You know I like I like the fact that you know that whenever the dog comes in, I can give it a pet. Obviously, I know I wouldn't see it all day. If I was in the gym, um, you know, I like that I can just if I need if I need if I if I need to um, say something to mom, you know, I can just, she's just right there. I can just chat with her or whatever. Um, and obviously, you know, the internet is a massive help. You know, um, we're able to communicate like we are right now. Where it's like touch of a button, like it's like we're sitting beside each other. It's not like it's not like how it used to be in like 2012, 2013 with Skype, where it's like I say something and then it takes about 10 seconds for you to hear it and then you reply back and it's all glitchy and we can barely see each other. It's like HD. You know exactly what I'm saying as my lips move, and I, I think you know the internet has been a massive help. And oh, what, yeah, that's a great point. I wanted to I wanted to touch on there what you said like um we were saying like obviously the body weight training online is not is not you know it's not our, our ideal program but again we do obviously offer online training but the only problem is we we like to give you a program that you can do in a gym because obviously online training would be like you know the be all it would be you know like the end goal for for um for us our business 
but and obviously you know bodyweight training isn't the, isn't 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 exactly what we would, would want to be doing we'd love to give you know a program where you can bring it to your local gym no matter where you are in the world and get it done so that's why i think you know we're back into the online corner it was a good thing um, that you know it kind of gave us the push to go online but it was also also a bad thing because obviously we couldn't give you the exact program we wanted to we gave you the best we could we could with with the with the options that we had but yeah um lockdown life you know uh professionally hasn't really bothered me that much i am i'm I, like even i i have to say even i do miss like the crack in the gym and seeing everybody and all that sort of stuff but when steven said that when we got that the the notification i did that we were going to be back in the office the next week so i was i was there was part of me that was a little bit sad yeah yeah like i do i do i enjoy sitting you know i have a desk in the in i have a desk in my in my little apartment works uh works good all day I love I love hosting the wee online classes, but yeah, I do. I, I can't wait to get back to have the crack with everybody. You know, no, social interaction. It's, it's bittersweet with everyone. Bittersweet with everyone. Um, like you said, pros and cons. Um, but here you make you make you make the best of it. Um, I'm just excited to get. I am excited to get back to normal because it's all about you know. It's like it's all great work from home. I'm sure if that's really what you wanted to do somewhere down the line, I'm sure that you could organize doing that. But it's it's it's, it's been forced to do anything. It's just. It's just mm. a siege, you know what I mean? It's when there's no other option, yeah. it's like, it's like almost like what about? I I think maybe what about like a three day, a three day in house and a two day work from home sort of schedule? That'd be that'd be cool. That'd be good. Yeah. Definitely be something I could give a go. But um, hybrid online trainers. Exactly. I think the main thing I missed during the entire um, quarantine was you know proper social interaction with my friends and stuff because like. Way, obviously in Ireland now from I don't know where you guys are listening from it's probably mostly in Ireland we are in a phase of reopening now where we can meet in groups of four outside and I went I met in a group I went I went and uh, I met my friends for the first time and it has to be about three months now first time about three months maybe even longer because I might not have seen them for a couple of weeks before lockdown but like even just we were sitting on the beach in Black Rock just being there looking at the sky together and it felt fantastic I honestly think just you and your friends. I just think you you just live in a book. Why? You just I don't know. Just just the just the life you live. You just always just do the the classic classic friend stuff. Just that real cliche stuff. So cool. It's it's, it's unreal. You've got a got a a group of friends like that, which is really cool. Um, and like I said, it's just like again, just been pulled away from that. It's just yeah. I think I think I think it's something that everybody took for granted. Exactly. Like when I when I when I walked up when I walked up from the other day, like obviously when you see your friends, you're like, oh well, how are you? What's crack? Blah blah blah. Like, but you know that you've seen them. Like it's it, when I when I when I saw I saw Brandon was the first person I saw, and he was like, the look, like the the interaction when you first see each other after song, it's it's like it's the the love is like evident. Yeah. You know, yeah. it's like it's just something that you miss. You know, like even I was thinking to myself like. When then we get back to normal, like it's gonna take a little bit of time to get back to actually being socially, you know, normal. Like yeah, definitely, being definitely. able to speak to somebody face to face. Yeah, but it's not. It's, I don't. I don't even think. Here's a result from search. Jesus, Google listening to me, <laughs> friggin' heck, that's terrifying. Um, yeah, no, I, I think it's. I lost my train of thought now, Google. I hope you're happy. Well, I was saying about how we're going to have to get used to being in social situations again. All right, yeah. No, it's, I think it's, I don't think the social in, um, aspect thing is going to be hard. I think it's the physical distance is obviously going to take, uh, like, like when, when am I going to see a friend and I'm just going to walk up straight away and just give him a hug? You know what yeah. I mean? Like, and, and, and not just doing it, but doing it without resistance. Exactly. Like, even, like, even, yeah, when you meet, when you, when, we, when I was, when I was with my friends today, there was that, like, there was that underlying, you know, um, what's the word? Underlying, like oh, I can't even think of the word. Every where every you know everybody knew that we had to be far apart, sort of yeah. thing. It's like an, under, it's an underlying hard, theme. Underlying theme was let's have fun a little bit away from each other. Yeah. Whereas well, before it was like when you're drinking or whatever, everyone's hanging out of each other uh, or laughing, hugging, crying, everything, and that's not allowed anymore. Yeah, in this case, it's like oh, I love you, but I think you're also poison. I love you, but don't kill me or my family. Yeah, please. Yeah, please don't do that. Well, that would be less than ideal. Less than optimal for, you know, my progression through life. True. That is true. Now. It's, it's very, very eloquent way of putting it. 
how so how have you got on with your uh how have you got on physically how's your fitness etc since you know lockdown like what have you found it affected it or didn't affect it i mean i'm i'm a little bit of a i'm a little bit of a, a lucky ducky in the sense that um you know my brother went to the gym so it was fantastic because i got to take a set of uh, dumbbells and kettlebells because the unprepared age that i am i didn't actually have my own kettle i actually had um, back in the day, I had my own barbells and dumbbells and stuff, but I left them up my mum's, um, and I didn't actually have any weights to hand. Uh, but Stephen uh, gave it, gave me a set, and I was actually injured at the time at the start of lockdown, so I only took a set of eights and a, and a twelve kettlebell. So, like I said, I was training most mostly muscular endurance um, for all the workouts that I was doing for the first what six weeks, and then obviously then when restrictions kind of loosened up a little bit, I managed to come back to the office. Obviously, still maintaining social distance from Stephen and Jen and stuff. But I managed to get my set, my 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 hands on a set of heavier weights, and that really emphasised to me the fact it's like, oh, actually, you know, it is weight training is very important for for just just really feeling the difference in your body. Like I said, your body needs your body needs to like like when I was doing the eights and twelves, like yeah, keep working, you know, keep pushing, you know. It's like I was panicking with fifteens and seventeens, you know. When I pick up a twenty eight kg kettlebell for swings, my whole body just locks up. It's like right, do or die kind of thing, you know, that sort of way. So yeah, it's like I kind of uh, I attribute it to like, or no, I attribute it, I kind of I it's the difference. Do you ever go? Do you ever go for like a big long cycle, or if, yeah, and as opposed to going for a run? Yeah, it's like the cycle where it's this is kind of like a, a cardiovascular example. The cycle is like my legs are burning; they are on fire. I can't possibly go any longer, but I'm not that out of breath. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. And with the lighter weights, it's like the lactate in my muscles is burning. But I'm not here. I'm still, you know, at 60% of my heart rate. But if I was squatting heavy, that tension through my body, my muscles would be trembling. I'd obviously open the high heart rate zone. So that's kind of, I do, I uh, I think I'll, I'll uh, once I get back to actually lifting heavy, it is going to hit me like a ton of bricks. That's a great analogy. I like that. Um, but and then in terms of kind of body comp, um, I, I suppose I had peaks and valleys with my nutrition. You know, for the first few while, I was kind of on point. Uh, I fell into a little bit of a lull, and then I started intermittent fasting, and that kind of um, scratched the itch a little bit to keep me a little bit leaner, uh, and then I kind of switched off again, and then I, once I got back in my heavy weights now, then I kind of started actually doing a bulk, and even though my calories went up, my weights went up, I can actually, I, I can notice, you know, a whole pile more definition now just from lifting, lifting back up the heavy weights, and um, so guys, if you're listening to this and you don't have heavy weights, and I've just gone on about how great heavy weights are, soon, all right, soon, we're nearly there. Nearly there. What about you now? Yeah, I remember. Well, obviously, when lockdown started, uh, I was on holidays in Bulgaria skiing at the time, and if everything was shut down, and we had to go home early, so we had to quarantine myself and Toronto for two weeks after that. And I got I in that in those two weeks, like there was obviously a little bit of um, a little bit of um, blah, blah 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 cheating on the diet or whatever. But uh, we got in, I got into like a really good habit of you know weighing up my food and all that and like me and Sean go we'd go to the shop we'd go to the shop and get like the healthy meals and have them all prepped track my fitness pal all that sort of thing and then when quarantine ended and she started staying in her house it did actually affect me a little bit where it's like there wasn't somebody else there looking like keeping an eye on me sort of thing yeah. and I did find that you know late when it came into like the later evenings and there was nobody there to judge and be like what are you doing what are you doing that for I did indulge a little bit. It's one of those things where it's like if nobody sees it, it's like you think you got away with it, sort of thing. Um, but then obviously we started the our you know our wealth pack group, and that has obviously you know the the pressure and the the pressure and the accountability of having you know three of your best friends um checking in on you constantly, like daily, weekly meetings, that sort of thing. It's definitely it's definitely helped a lot. And um, yeah, I'm ready. I'm ready to uh, I'm ready to lift some weights. Yeah, I mean. I'm sure I, just, I just want to deadlift a barbell off the ground. I know, yeah. I, honestly, I can't wait to start deadlifting again. I see my my deadlift video from like a year ago, my PR for 170, and I haven't literally touched one since. Sure, we can't even anymore. We've uh, we're becoming a bar. We've become a barbell free gym or a dumbbell yeah. gym now. Yeah, I suppose like barbell barbells and a room with 16 people in it. It's just not. It's just not doable. Yeah, it's not feasible. You know. Yeah, but I, 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 I just, just want to emphasize just kind of um, just on nutrition obviously look everybody's kind of in, in their own different mental headspace with the whole lockdown and 
you know, everybody's going through um, a different season in their life. And I do think it's, it's important to kind of understand where you are in, in life with your season and then how that's going to affect your nutrition. Um, obviously, if you're morbidly obese, and honestly, I say that, I say that as kindly as possible. Um, it's, not, it's, not, it's, not, it's not a judgment. It's just, you know, it's just, that's just what it is. If you're morbidly obese, I really do believe that your season should be 11 months out of the year, you know, and that's just because of, it's, it's so unhealthy to be grossly overweight. Um, and just even with this COVID thing, if you are, one of, one of the biggest things in New York, I think, was one of the biggest risk factors for getting COVID and, and becoming sick and ill from it was, um, was, was obesity. Um, it's just, it's, it's not a good system. Um, but obviously, like I said, this is an ex- this is an exception. So it's like if you are, you know, on a fat loss plan, and God forbid you lose your job, God forbid, you know, you you come into some emotional distress. It's like that's why you know you bank, hopefully, the first five months of the year of good nutrition, so that way you can take a break emotionally from bloody, you know, cracking the whip on yourself because you might need a break because this is a, yeah. this is a stressful time, um, and. You know, it's like it's not. It's 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 maybe not the right time for you to start a diet in under the COVID, um, COVID crisis. But it, it you know, it's, it's like you definitely still have, not a time for you to gain weight either. Exactly. Yeah. It's 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 so it's something that needs definitely to be kept an eye on because it's it's not it's not as if the whole country shut down and you're helpless and now all you can do is eat absolute crap. Um, it's literally just about making a plan, you know, it's like now's the time to kind of plan and put things into perspective and maybe prioritize your health because there's so many people that, you know, got this sickness randomly and if, if, if you're, if you're um, obese or overweight, you know, you're, you're putting yourself into a risk category um, and, and, and that, that can affect the people that are around you in such a negative way if God forbid something that can happen to you because, um, you know, everybody, everybody is so crucial to somebody else, like, you know, everybody's somebody's son or daughter and imagine, you know, imagine literally, like a smoker, you know, imagine like, imagine a smoker having to deal with the repercussions of their actions for health and knowing that they did it to themselves, you know, and then literally doing that to their family. And I, I, I kind of put, I kind of put eating sugar in that category because sugar is a drug at the end of the day. And it's not that, you know, drugs are, are overtly bad or alcohol is bad or tobacco is, you know, bad and you're a bad person if you, if you partake in it. But it is a case, it's like it does have repercussions um, to the people that are around you and to yourself. I think it's so important to just kind of, you know, just address that on a day-to-day basis. You know, it's like, it's not like, it's, you know, it's, you don't have to get a perfect, you don't even have to get 90, you know, like you don't even have to get a 90% or 80%, right? You know, 65% effort. Just move the needle a little bit more in the right direction. Like honestly, a half a pound a week in two, in, t- in two years, you'd be down 52 pounds, you know? So just not making things worse for yourself is so, so important. Um, and I find that, you know, if this is, if this is a time where be, by maybe you're emotionally stressed out, um, you know, take a break. Take a break, but also take stock of things and what's important to you. And, you know, if, 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 if anybody you know is sick, you know, take this as a, as, as a pretty serious warning. Um, um, you know, if, and I don't just mean that, you know, just for if, you, if you're obese. I mean, that, you know, if you're diabetic, if you, if you smoke cigarettes, if you're an alcoholic, um, you know, if you don't, even if you just don't exercise, you know, take, taking this opportunity to kind of prioritize your health um, should, 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 it should shoot right up the list now at this stage in the game because, you know, we're all adults, we're all responsible for ourselves. We all have a responsibility um, to look after ourselves for other people. You know, one of Jim Rohn's famous quotes is, I look after me for you if you look after you for me. You know, and God forbid, like, honestly, like, if, if anybody that I love, like I like I know in my circle, like I know in my circle, I literally jeer and jab at my my friends if they've got if they've got a vice. If I if they've got a bad vice, like for talk's sake, you know, if someone doesn't eat vegetables, if somebody, you know, if somebody smokes, if somebody drinks too much, if somebody eats too much, if somebody doesn't exercise, I literally will jeer at you all day out of pure love. I'll just slag it just because it's like, look, I want what's best for you and I know you can do better and I know that what I'm you know, what I'm trying to do based on the science that I know is better for you. You know, that's the way. And I try and do yeah. it in a, in a jokey, lighthearted way. But then at the end of the day, sometimes you have to get real with people and just be like, look, you need to get, you need to do something about this or you're going to end up in trouble. And I would just, I just, I would hate it if I bit my tongue my entire life without saying it to you. Yeah, it's true. Yeah, so I, I guess. Sitting, I sitting, uh, sorry, go on. Sorry. No, you go, what were you saying? Oh, no, 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 you go on. I said enough. 
No, it was just kind of something related to um, what you said there. I was sitting, I was sitting there like last night, night four, and I was ha- I was having this mental battle myself whether I was gonna have something bad and go over my calories and all because I'd already finished my calories. And I was sent- I I don't know why this sentence even came into my head, but it was like, would you rather eat or leave Shauna alone? Mm. It's like, would you rather eat or would you rather be dead? And I was yeah. like, I was like, I'd rather. Or, or would you rather eat or would you rather be alive? Sorry, not be dead. Both are bad things. And I was like, I'd rather be alive. Yeah. I was just thinking, like, people, like, myself included, like, you take being alive as a given. It's like, you take your body and, you know, your health and all that sort of stuff. A lot of people, not everyone has seen a lot of people, take it as a, as a given. It's like, yeah, okay, I can do it I want because I'm alive and, I'm, and nothing's going to happen to me. I'm invincible. But, like, if you don't take care of it, it's like a machine. It's like, it's gonna break down eventually. Yeah, yeah. I mean, but that's it's the common thing. Of that's one one reason. You know, when people have a near death experience, nine times out of ten, their whole life changes, their energy changes, their perspective changes because they actually realize, oh my god, I am finite. I am only here. Like, and, and it's 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 all it's all well and good. You know, you saying it. It's all well and good. Me saying it. It's like, but these are just words. I still actually haven't. You know, I'm 24. I haven't still actually comprehended. I I know I say I know that I know that I'm supposed to know that I'm not here forever. But I still yeah. genuinely don't believe it. You know, I still yeah. genuinely don't believe it. But I at least have heard enough people say it that I know that that's the way I should act because I genuinely know that's the truth. I've seen people die. I've, 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 I've witnessed people growing old that I know and, and, and passing away. So I know it's going to happen to me. You know, I've found like literally like 16 gray hairs on my head already. I'm bloody 24. It's just bad genes, unfortunately, on my, my part. But it's just a case of like, you know, it's like, clock's moving on and if I could push that off as long as I could and all it's going to cost me is a 30 second or a 30 second a 30 minute exercise session every day plus a walk plus maybe you know adding some greens in my diet and not been such a glutton because I am you know it's like I know if I know if I just let it all go it would all go you know I would just be I would just be in a in a, in a hell of a state because I remember when I first met Chloe you know it's like when you're in that kind of um in that kind of atmosphere where it's just kind of you're just celebrating all the time it's like you know it's like you can't celebrate all the time i moved from from you know a high performing athlete in performing at you know an i an, a, a national level boxing to like this fella who couldn't do a plank for 30 seconds because i let it all go and who knows yeah. you know that was like three months three months from national, national athlete to bloody not being able to hold a plank use it or lose it that's yeah. the same all right guys i think Oh, yeah, there, we, you yeah, go. Oh, no, there we go. Two of us wrapping it up, guys. We got to shoot off. Um, it's been a pleasure as always. If we inspired you to do anything, guys, I'd love to hear it in the comments below. Uh, maybe if you're, if you're, uh, if you disagree with anything that we said, you know, I'd love to hear your opinion on that as well. Please comment below. Let us know in the comments on YouTube. If you're just listening to this, feel free to message me on Instagram at FF Movement Coach, um, and you can catch Niall on his Instagram handle at at ff underscore Niall Valentine let us know what you thought of the podcast let us know if you you know um, agree with any of the things we said or if you you know um, Jesus Christ my brain is not working what I, I said you're just, you're just going to repeat what I said <laughs> if you say if you uh, what's the word if you if you feel like I can't I literally my brain's not working you, you agree with what we what, what we said if you're if, if you're buzzing on our vibe let us know if you disagree Bloody if your struggles during lockdown were the same as our struggles or if you had different struggles I want to know about alright guys thank you very much for listening and I'm sorry that my brain's not working today guys as always a pleasure we'll see you in the next one peace see you later <laughs>